Good evening. We'll get a call to order this meeting on April 4th, 2019 of the Newmarket School Board. Uh, we'll start out with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Special Development Committee met on Monday and they're beginning to plan for the 2019-20 District Professional Development Days. Our Universal Design for Learning teams are also continuing to work. Um, the spring training session was last week in Concord and they're also in, in the midst of what's called the instructional rounds process, which is teachers observing one another's practice, having the opportunity to give feedback um, and share um, what they observe in each other's classrooms. Uh, let's see, we are working on PD grants that are available for mathematics, so we expect to submit that to the state at the end of next week is the deadline actually, so thanks to our teacher leaders and Matt Foster for stepping up um, to help map out what that might look like. Uh, ah, at the 418 workshop. Our um, teacher leaders are coming to talk to you about science, next generation science standards, and our robotics team is coming as well that evening to update you on their work. Tomorrow is National Technical Honor Society induction at SST. And kindergarten registration night is next Thursday at 6. 6. Uh, let's see. Got three more things on here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six student athletes who've been recognized by Seacoast Media. Um, they've been nominated for the Player of the Year in their respective sports, and they are Blake Moran, Fred Holmes, and Nicholas Berthume for boys' soccer, Ashley Baudet and Marie Honer for girls' soccer, and Shane Moore for football. So congratulations to them. They also get to go to a nice banquet in June. We received a donation from Link Together for $312.50 for the elementary school playground from their box top collection efforts. I shared with you a um, news article, but I want to recognize again Mihail Michaela Hartman. Um, she and her fellow student from SST, Samara Holmes, received um, recently a Yale Science and Engineering Association Award for their work on 4D printing, um, which she described when she was here with the SST folks. The elementary school concert, chorus concert, is April 17th. Thanks, Meredith. Any questions? What time uh, for that concert? Do Six you know? o'clock. Okay. I guess the uh, student rep report will be quick tonight. I think we can consider it complete. All right. So um, going on to uh, um, the committee uh, reports. I'll go first with the with the building committee. As Meredith touched on, um, there's a lot going on actually. Like as we speak right now, um, I want to thank all the folks involved, including Meredith and administration, Greg, uh, and everybody else, and the teachers and uh, students and parents who's um, you know uh, stayed patient during the move out of the. Uh, modulars into the permanent classrooms. Uh, there's moving going on. I think it started today, right, Meredith? It's going to go on tomorrow and on Saturday. So there's some people working extra extra time to get this done and uh, to get folks into the into the into the new classroom. So just thanks to everybody who's doing that. Um, it's a it's a big commitment. Um, and generally, the building project is still uh, going well. It's still on time, on budget. Um, they started, at, as you can see, the uh, site work again this week. Um, they're making good progress on that. Uh, they'll be paving this month at some point, um, weather permitting. Um, everybody can see the nice new brick facade, at least on the front of the, uh, the east wing of the, of the high school building. They moved the scaffolding. I think they'll be done the brick within the month, probably on the other side. So it's, it's, really, it's really shaping up. Um, and uh, um, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm encouraged um, by the pace of it and that um, everything's sort of been ahead of schedule so far. So thanks to all involved there. Any other, Ingrid, SST? SST, yes. Uh, the new SST principal was announced this week. Uh, Sharon Wilson, who is currently an assistant principal over at Nashua High School, is going to be the new principal at SST. And we will be addressing the 20-year agreement with the state uh, as part of one of our action items. So we'll discuss that when we get there. And last night I went down for their small business uh, program. It was excellent, and the food was great. Yeah. Anything from budget? Have they met? No? We met, and we put together our, our schedule. That's about it. Okay. Great. Just actually, I forgot one more thing on, on facilities. If um, 
folks want more information about the, the modulars and, and uh, what transpired there, yeah, they can look at uh, Greg put together a memo that's in the materials for tonight, which are online as well. Uh, we, uh, we uh, Meredith and I, put out a, a letter last week, just you know, sort of running through um, what transpired, but also what uh, what's going to happen going forward. Greg sort of expounds on that in his memo. If folks are interested. Um, all right, so we'll I get have bids for you um, to approve on the modulars at the next meeting. Right, we actually got some bids on the modulars, which is good news. So um, we'll get that info to you next next meeting. Um, next item up for discussion, I guess, is um, uh, the uh, first reading of several policies. Um, I'm not sure how we want to handle that. Meredith, just list them out. Or yep, we can do that. Yeah. I think if you want to do the superintendent search update first. Sure. Do you want me to just do a brief? Yeah. Um, last week, the board chose Susan Givens and Deborah Taylor as our finalists for the superintendent um, position in Newmarket. We interviewed them last Saturday morning. Am I correct? Yes. Right. And parts of the board will be going to Massachusetts to visit Susan's school on Tuesday and Vermont also on Tuesday to visit Deborah's school. And then both candidates will be in the district uh, on Wednesday. Meredith and I have been working on the schedule for that day. We'll get it to everyone and get it out to the community. There'll be a forum in the evening for people to interact with the two candidates at that point. And then um, the board will make a decision after that. There will be opportunities for folks to provide input, forms to fill out. Please fill them out so we can get people's input in this decision because it's a monumental one for our community. In, in Relatedly, tentatively after, we were just thinking ahead in terms of scheduling um, of a possible board meeting uh, a week from tonight, uh, maybe start earlier at 6. Um, I don't know if folks have their schedules, if that would work. Works for me. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get that noticed if it, if it works for all of us. Um, it's right after the the in in district and out of district visits so so uh, a week from tonight instead of it'll be on the 11th then right right doesn't work for me okay what about um, uh, earlier uh, earlier might earlier like five o'clock like five okay could everybody make five I can make five I can. All right. Well, let, let's put let's put that down. Um, we'll get it published. All right. I guess now we're on to policies. Sure. So um, once again, we've broken them out um, into three groups. Uh, there are three new policies. One is actually not a new, but it's substantially changed. Um, the regulations for parent involvement in education for Title One. Website publishing, which is new, um, recommended policy from the New Hampshire School Board Association. And then um, one is really not new, but it was, uh, the letters were crossed up in your previous version of it. It was titled LK, but it's really policy KL, which is legislative representative from the school board. Um, then you have a group of policies that were revised, and those revisions are highlighted in red. Um, again, these have come through the policy committee. So um, Joint Loss Management Committee, highly qualified teachers, um, which technically doesn't exist anymore under legislation, um, but the School Board Association still recommends that you keep that policy in place. Public gifts and donations and acceptance of gifts, so the procedural aspect of that. Public information program and public complaints. Public conduct on school property community use of school equipment, fund drives, solicitations, advertising, visitors to the schools, and then your reviewed no changes recommended lists are all um, existing policies that are current um, and were reviewed as well by the pol policy committee, and then three that were recommended for deletion um, that were removed by the school board association or recommended for removal by the policy committee are obsolete and those include um, public conduct on school property specific to athletic events and regulations for um, visitors to school. Okay, so that's the first reading on those. So in two weeks we'll come back and um, have a second reading and, and uh, 
um, in the interim, if anybody notices any uh, things that or they have questions on them, it would be helpful maybe if you get them to Kim or, or Ingrid yeah. or both. Yep. We can consider them in advance. Yeah, gonna, typically we'll bring those to you a month out. Um, another month. Backed up okay. Because of some meetings that ran long, but um, they'll come back for you on your May 2nd agenda, so it gives you a little more time to review. And we have a, a policy committee in the meantime. All right. Any questions on that? Okay, if not, let's move on to some action items. We have a approval of minutes. Those are in your uh, materials uh, for the regular business meeting on March 21st and non-public on March 26th. Um, when somebody's ready, could we have a, a motion for approval? I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Uh, okay. Any changes to the minutes? If none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Approved. Next item is the teacher contract renewal. Again, that's in your packet. And that I was recommending you move to after non the, a non-public session. Oh, okay. All right. On to the SST regional agreement. Uh, I saw Margaret last night and she asked that we look closely at page three, n item number four there on the receiving district. It, it's all in italics and she said we do not want this language, that we do want to look closely at the language on page 15, uh, number one. So we don't want, she said we don't want paragraph we do not, four. do not want the italic language on page three, number four. Okay. And we do want the change in appendix A that's indicated in number one. Uh, the background on that is that this is the way, as you see it here on page 15, is the way SST has been operating with superintendents and school board appointed reps. Uh, in the governing board, and that if we don't have that, it'll it really becomes very cumbersome because then you have more meetings than are needed. That the way it's operating now with this board, we get to meet and uh, regularly. It's not even monthly, but we do meet regularly, and um, the the specialty advisors for each of the content areas meets. Uh, in consultation other uh, separate from this although we have had joint meetings I think at the beginning of each year we have a joint meeting okay I'm not I'm not certain how the process for approving this works is this um, you know I'm sure multiple districts are looking at the same thing right. yeah and it, it is the is the idea that we just give our feedback that we we probably wouldn't agree to this I, and, I think and we this have to, yeah I th think we have to pass it at this and we need to do it soon because it, she'd like to have it done by May. She's yeah, going to be leaving so the, before the June meeting. The probably. process is each board of the sending district has to approve it. It's been recommended by the governing board, which includes the school board representative and superintendent from each of those districts. It has to be submitted to the state for approval. And then once the state approves it, it comes back around to the district for signatures. This happens once every 20 years. Um, the structure that is proposed in the appendix, as Ingrid points out, is the existing structure. But the language in italics is what the state includes in its model program, which is why there are model template for these right. regional agreements, which is why there's that discrepancy. Mm -hmm. um, the feeling from the governing right. board uh, was that this process is very cumbersome and would make it very difficult to manage um, given the number of sending districts and the right. process um, that is in place is effective. And it has been effective in, in Margaret's tenure there, which is 14 years now. And as the board noted, none of them were there when the last 20 year agreement was made and none of us will be there 20 years from now when the next one is made. So we're trying to do our best to make sure that it's uh, an effective and working uh, model. So other than that, uh, Ingrid, are there any other changes from the existing? I think that the special ed, did that change? Yes. 
Okay, maybe you can explain that better because it has to do with funding yep. that, that I don't necessarily So the, the one other change is to the calculation of, um, the, currently there's a separate dollar amount that each district pays for each student they send who is identified with some sort of special educational disability. Um, the change is, and I'll explain why in a minute, but the change is to just spread that cost out across the districts. And part of the rationale for that is that just because you have a disability doesn't mean you require special educational services when you're attending SST, right? It, the, the courses you're taking may not relate to your dis area of disability at all. And it seemed like um, there had been some history in some of the sending districts where students who had disabilities might be denied the opportunity to attend SST because there was an additional cost. And the governing body felt very strongly that that wasn't appropriate, that that admission to SST is based on your skill set as a whole, that is not about whether or not you have a disability. They admit you based on your qualifications. Um, if you require special educational services, they are available through SST. And if those um, needs are significant, um, sort of beyond the typical, for example, you needed a sign language interpreter. Right, then the sending district would still be responsible for those unusual costs. Um, so spreading it out seemed like the most equitable way to approach it and the least discriminatory way um, in order to provide access to all students. And are those unusual costs identified? Uh, there's not a specific list of those, but I think districts, the sending districts have a pretty good understanding okay. of what those are, and if there is a dispute, it would go through the governing body, the principal, superintendent of the sending district, and then it could come to the governing body for a resolution. So, Meredith, how would it be allocated? Would it be um, based on um, number of schools in the district, number of students, or just this is your this district, this district's divide by the whole? So currently, the total cost for special education at SST is somewhere in the, th I want to say three to $400,000 range. It was on that slide yeah. um, and in the notes that I, that I think we shared out with you. Um, but that, that cost includes the cost of two special educators and um, some number of paraprofessionals. <coughs> I believe that number is four. Yeah, Again, if you look at the bottom of page 16 and the top of page 17. And so right now, that number is divided on New Market sends X number of students with disabilities out of a total of, you know, whatever number of students with disabilities are sent by all the sending districts. Instead, what would happen is that 400,000 would get rolled into the budget total for SST and divided across all the students being sent to SST. So we would still pay our proportionate share if we're sending, you know, 77 students. We pay, out of 800, we pay that percentage mm -hmm. um, of the total cost, as opposed to a separate cost for each child with a disability. Again, because they aren't necessarily receiving services from SST. And but I would hate to have someone denied right. access to the education because their district deems it impossible to pay for their services. That right. doesn't feel right to me. But in the, in the case of a student perhaps needing transportation and an assistant during the class, that would come back as a two. Yeah, if, if we were right. if, had okay. a student Which whose individual sense. education plan required one-to-one -one assistance, yeah, yeah, then yeah. we would be responsible gotcha. for providing that service. Gotcha. But we would be providing that. That's absolutely right. We're providing it already wherever right? that yes. student is. Uh, and the other thing is that there are schools that limit the number of students who can attend. So that if that were a skewed cost value, it would change. They would be in a position to have to consider changing the number of students yeah. that they allow mm -hmm. to attend. They put, so the schools mm -hmm. have to put a quota on the number of students, period, who can go. Okay. So any other questions? What I'd like to do is look at it again, um, mm -hmm. and maybe we can, can we vote on it next Thursday? Could we do that? Is the timing uh, work out? Our meeting is meeting on the 18th, in May. but it's I want to say the 14th, but I'm not sure. 13th. I'm going to need that 13th. Okay. On the on the email from um, Margaret, it says the yeah, 13th, and I talked to Margaret again. I'd sent her a message twice this week with your name on it, so that okay. she knows. And I spoke to her last night and explained that you're going to be the rep and that I will plan to come with you next month, but that uh, you would be taking a look at 
Let's see what that is. So I've heard the 18th and the 13th, which, uh, Mark? The 18th is the next school board meeting. Yeah. And I, I'm fine with deferring the decision to that. Yeah, the 13th is the SST meeting at 4.30, and they run an hour. Okay. So, so Margaret wants it for that, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't matter if we, I mean, if we approve it on the 18th. I mean, this wouldn't. Yeah, be, it's just. It, yeah. She wants that, so that we can take that decision to the 13th of May meeting. I gotcha. Okay. So yeah. So let's let's uh, let's then defer a decision on that till the meeting on the 18th. Our meeting on the 18th of April. Yeah. Her concern is that because she's approaching the end of her tenure there that she might be gone before a June meeting and didn't want to leave it to the end. Okay. Thank you, Ingrid, for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we're on to the uh, workers' comp coverage. It's right after that document we just looked at. Could you give us a primer on that? Yes, this is a program you've participated in that you have to renew every three years. You renewed it before I came to you the last time um, at the recommendation of your business administrator and superintendent and, well, uh, possibly, <laughs> or acting superintendent at that time. Um, and um, it, it, it's still good practice for the district. It buffers you against spikes in costs. And it's, again, both for your workers' comp and your property and liability. And Primex is, is the only game or, or one of two, right, for this or in the state? Yes. Yeah. It is the largest. Yeah. So um, without any questions, um, <clears throat> if there are no questions, I'll seek a, a motion to we need a motion to approve um, the property and uh, workers' comp, Primex um, coverage. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's approved. All right. Um, we're on to a second reading of policies. And um, I just, I, I'm repeating myself, but I. Um, I feel like I'm back in law school, given the volume of reading here. So I appreciate all that you guys have done to look through all this stuff. And um, I, uh, I had no major comments. Well, I wouldn't put it that way. But the only thing I, I saw on these that, um, and it was, I think, just a typo or something, on policy GDB, um, Good luck trying to find it. Um, it's right toward the front. Yeah, it's actually it's about <coughs> yeah. this far back. This far back. Oh, GD. Like right here. GD? GDB. Yeah, hmm. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So it's towards well, the top well. on the first paragraph, just the magic words of, you know, the, of, of, of all the classes, protected classes. It doesn't include gender in there. That probably should. In in what I went, I, I recalled having read um, uh, GBA, which may be the the more current list of. It seems to be more inclusive because it also it also includes ethnic origin. Um, and and I don't know if, uh, the word disability versus qualified handicap. I don't know if that's a term of art that needs to be different in in this policy. But my my broader point, maybe just make them consistent. We, we probably should have gender and yeah, it's consistent with your uh, uh, other affirmative action policy ABC, right. I think as well. Yeah, that's what I noticed there. Which one was that? This is a uh, GDB. It's it, it's a uh, yeah. It just it didn't. I, I noticed it didn't have gender. Then I compared it to the GBA, which seems to be the more inclusive list, and may want to just match them up. And um, uh, the other th one. I had a question. Well, first, uh, second of all, thanks for putting together the policy on the uh, s school s uh, building or facilities use. Um, hopefully, you were able to borrow from some other um, policies, and 
but it's uh, it looks to me to be pretty comprehensive. I guess it's probably one of those things that you know we can tweak as as experience bears out. Um, but I think it's a good good start. Um, the only question I had was that um, that that new policy is KFR. We have another one in here, KF, which is the old policy. Do and I'm wondering if we even need that anymore. If we're just going to create confusion by having. So KF is your guiding policy, and KFR is your procedural component. Okay. So KF just sort of sets the broad parameters, and then KFR outlines the more detailed procedures. Okay. Um, that's all that I had for all the second readings for tonight. And if, um, if there's any other comments or, or notes or uh, let's talk about them. If not, uh, can I have a motion to approve on a second reading all of those policies with the changes? So moved. Yeah. Elizabeth and Al or Ingrid. Mm -hmm. Al, yes. second. Um, any further questions on those? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 They're approved. I think we're to the end. Um, we need to go into non-public uh, under uh, RSA 91A3, Roman 2B and C. If I could have a motion. So moved. On a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Zink. Aye. Ms. Alberg. Aye. Ms. McKinney. Aye. 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 Ms. Shelton. Okay, we're in non-public.